So you're an American and you want to bank outside of the United States, but everyone keeps telling you it's not possible, it's not allowed, and some folks even say it's illegal. Well, no surprise here, any of the talking heads that are out there following these lines of thinking, they're completely wrong. And in this video, I'm gonna share how you and the millions of other Americans who want to bank offshore can find the right bank in the best possible country. This is gonna include remote account opening in places like Singapore, Switzerland, Luxembourg, the Channel Islands, and many other jurisdictions. I'm also gonna share a shortcut that around 40% of you watching this can use to access all of the benefits of offshore banking without ever opening an offshore bank account. Now, if this is your first time on the channel, my name is Chris, I'm the head of banking relationships at Global Banks. We're a team of banking experts who help businesses and individuals solve cross-border banking challenges. I spend my time talking to bankers around the world, uncovering new opportunities, and helping our clients make the most of their existing banking relationships. In the past year, we've helped Americans open in some of the top banking hubs around the world, including opening accounts remotely in Singapore, Switzerland, Luxembourg, and Monaco, just to name a few jurisdictions. But you don't need to deposit millions of dollars or be looking for private banking relationships in these jurisdictions in order to open an account offshore as an American. Which brings me to that shortcut that I just mentioned. Around 40% of you, you don't actually need an offshore account. Now, this may seem counterintuitive, especially since we're in the business of international banking, but we prefer to help people who actually need our assistance. So here's what I mean by shortcut. We see a lot of Americans, especially retirees and digital nomads, who are planning on spending a large part of the year outside of the United States while still spending some time back in the US. And they're looking to open offshore accounts for a few very specific reasons. What they're trying to optimize for tends to be low cost foreign transaction fees, low cost foreign currency conversions, and easy to access cash while they're abroad. So before I outline where everyone else can open offshore accounts, here's a quick strategy for anyone in this category to meet their needs with as little effort and cost as possible. Step one, get yourself a US credit card with zero foreign transaction fees. Think Amex or Chase. But if you're only gonna get one card, try to get yourself a visa since this is gonna be more widely accepted while you're traveling abroad. Step two is gonna be opening an account with Charles Schwab. And you use that account to facilitate international ATM withdrawals. The reason here is that Schwab will automatically reimburse you for any surcharges from global ATMs. And step three is keeping your accounts open back in the United States. Now, if you are going to be selling your house or canceling a lease before traveling, you can update your address in your account to a correspondence address like a family member or another US mailing address. Though this can sometimes trigger compliance reviews depending on your profile and the bank that you're dealing with, so be careful. But if all you're trying to do is cost-effectively withdraw cash while abroad, and reduce the cost of your foreign transactions, these three steps will give you the basic banking stack that you need without any of the extra complexity. It's also gonna save you from any additional reporting requirements that might apply as an American with an offshore bank account. On the other hand, if you're looking to make foreign investments, acquire international real estate, support dependents abroad, diversify your finances across political and economic lines, or move to a different country and make local payments, you will almost always need to open an offshore bank account. So if any of those objectives fall in line with what you're looking to do, let's dive into the categories which translate into different types of banks, countries, and deposit levels that Americans can access offshore. Now, category one, we're gonna call this one local banking. This involves opening transactional accounts abroad with low deposits. These are gonna generally range from $0 to say around $5,000, depending on the bank. And these are accounts that Americans can open in basically any country. But the catch here is that banks wanna see that you have local ties, residency, or an acceptable reason to open accounts. What's considered a local tie or even an acceptable reason, that's gonna vary depending on the bank and from country to country. But basically, if you live in, do business in, or even regularly travel to a specific country, there are usually banking options that Americans can access. Category two is where things start to get interesting. Let's call this one international banking. So this category primarily involves premier banking options and the deposits here, they range from around $25,000 to $250,000, depending on the bank. Now, these accounts are usually found in expat hubs like the UAE, Singapore, UK, Channel Islands, etc. And whether you can, as an American, open in these jurisdictions, that's gonna come down to the local restrictions, your economic ties, and whether you can meet the deposit requirements. But the biggest factor in terms of successfully opening accounts in this category is where are you a resident? In most cases, if you are a US citizen residing in the US, 
you're going to struggle to open these accounts, though there are still some options available. Unfortunately, these options are slowly disappearing. Quick example here, we've helped US citizens residing in the US open accounts in Singapore, Europe, and the UAE in the last year completely remotely. While these accounts have remained open, recent changes have made it nearly impossible for US citizens residing in the US to open certain types of accounts anymore, especially remotely. Now, the next category is category three, private banking. Here, you're gonna need to deposit between $1 million and $5 million to break into this category as an American, depending on where you wanna bank. For comparison, other nationalities can access these exact same banking options with anywhere from $500,000 to $3 million, maybe even less. So basically, as an American, you're being asked to deposit twice as much as other nationalities due to the increased reporting requirements and risks to the bank. But if you can afford entry, you'll be able to access some of the best private banks in the world, even as an American. This is gonna include banks in Singapore, Switzerland, Monaco, Luxembourg, the Channel Islands, and many other top banking jurisdictions. Now, before you ask, these deposit levels are firm. And in certain instances, being able to make a minimum deposit as an American, it's not gonna be enough. Not because the banks are playing games, but because some of them have firm quotas on the amount that they're even willing to accept from Americans in terms of deposits each year. So even if you can meet the minimum, they may not be able to take you, or they'll tell you to come back on January 1st. But before you blame the banks, it's worth reminding you that Americans are seen as higher risk by foreign financial institutions due to the increased potential for penalties and the increased compliance burden. It's that simple. I'll skip the detailed history lesson and just say that the rollout of the Foreign Account Tax Compliance Act, or FATCA, in 2010, that was the catalyst for all of your foreign banking difficulties. You can basically blame UBS for helping Americans evade taxes with anonymous accounts. Now, as a result, if you wanna open foreign accounts, you need to look for banks with an openness to US clients and a willingness to meet all of the regulatory and compliance requirements imposed by the US. And just to be clear, this is true whether you're looking for retail, international, or private banking options across the three categories that we just discussed. So let's take a look at where you can actually find these banks and more specifically, how much you'll need to deposit to access them and maybe a few restrictions and requirements to open accounts as well. I'm not gonna dig into category one, the local transactional banking, since that can basically include any country in the world where you have local residency, ties, or a justifiable reason to bank. Just remember you're going to need proof and you almost always need to open these accounts in person. Okay, so the first category we will dig into is international banking as an American. And the first jurisdiction to discuss is Panama. Now, Americans, they can typically open in Panama with a minimum deposit around $10,000. Remote account opening is going to be possible and certain Panama banks do accept you as residents, though you will need a reason for wanting to bank there. And these reasons, they can include diversification or demonstrating local ties. The next jurisdictions I wanna dig into, it's the Channel Islands. Now here, you as an American are looking at between $50,000 and $250,000 with remote opening, you will need to explain your reasons for wanting to bank here, which can include international diversification and certain banks will even accept US residents, though it is more challenging. The next place to consider is Singapore, and this is where things start to get a little tricky. Here, you're going to need between $150,000 and $250,000 to open an account. But more importantly, you're going to need residency in a suitable jurisdiction. This usually means Asia, but sometimes Latin American jurisdictions are also acceptable. Now, if you're looking for international banking with investment options, Singapore is not a place for you. You will face restrictions. And essentially, if an American opens in Singapore, they're getting a high deposit checking account, though it'll be with one of the best banks in the world, so it's not the worst thing. Now let's talk about category three, and here we're gonna be looking at private banking. So if you're looking to open a private bank account as an American, you should be prepared to have the bank manage some of the deposit, or tap into products like asset-backed financing, various lumbar loan options, or pay maintenance fees. Though if you're not looking to access products or invest, you may wanna consider international banking options instead, and that's because it's more cost-effective and typically the services are better aligned with what you'll be looking for if you don't wanna invest. Now, if you're interested in private banking, I'm going to be doing a complete breakdown of private banking in the coming weeks. This is gonna include when it does and does not make sense to access private banks and the fees that you need to look out for before opening an account. So if you're interested in private banking or even international banking more broadly, make sure you're subscribed to the channel so you get alerted when we post that video. Okay, so where can Americans open private bank accounts? Well, first up is Switzerland. 
Now, as an American, if you want a bank here, you need to be ready to deposit between $1 million and $3 million as an absolute minimum. You can be a US resident and accounts are almost always open remotely. Not too far from Switzerland, Luxembourg, very similar in terms of the services available and even some of the banks, though deposits are a bit higher, usually between 3 million and 5 million as an American client. Private banking in Singapore is at a similar level to Luxembourg, 3 million to $5 million, though you're going to have more of those restrictions that we talked about in international banking. Basically, you're gonna end up with a large checking deposit and you're gonna be able to access some foreign currency, but that's basically it. That said, you will end up banking with some of the best banks in the world. Another option that's less frequently used is Monaco. Now, if you're looking to open private bank accounts in Monaco, the deposits are gonna range between $1 million and $3 million, but you almost always need to be on a path towards residency. So that means buying a property and applying to become a resident of Monaco should be in the cards. Of course, the numbers that I'm sharing here are basic benchmarks and they will change depending on your client profile, risk factors, and how much a bank actually wants you as a client. Now, that means deposit requirements, they can go up in the case of higher risk profiles, such as crypto source wealth, or they can go down in the case when a bank actually wants you as a client, which tends to be when you're looking to invest your entire deposit through the bank. And when it comes to actually opening accounts as an American, there are a few other differences that you do need to be aware of, including a more intensive account opening process, additional document and form submissions, annual disclosures and reporting. Depending on the bank, you may also need to speak with a specific banker that exclusively handles US clients, or you may need to speak with a specific division or branch of the bank that exclusively caters to Americans. It all just depends on which bank you choose, the services you're after, how you plan to open the accounts, your reasons for opening and your deposit. Also, I should remind you that after opening an offshore account and meeting a few basic reporting thresholds, you as a US person will need to report your account each year to the US government. Basically, if the accumulated total of your foreign financial accounts reaches $10,000 in a calendar year, you're required to file an FBAR, which is the Report of Foreign Bank and Financial Accounts, also known as FinCEN Form 114 which can be done through the BSA e-filing system. Of course, whichever financial institution you end up opening with, they'll also be reporting your financial accounts to the US government. So don't forget to file and report correctly because the government will find out. Okay, that was a lot to take in. And the biggest hurdle that most Americans face when it comes to opening offshore is deciding where to open accounts and which banks to actually deal with. So to help you explore all of your options further, I've asked the team to include a link to our free guide, Where to Bank Offshore, in the pinned comment below. It's free, so grab your copy. Of course, if you'd like more dedicated support opening offshore as an American, we'd be happy to help. You can either get started using our banking intelligence platform, Global Banks IQ, or our dedicated account opening service, Global Banks Insider. You can explore both of these options at globalbanks.com forward slash products. And if you want to explore offshore banking further, you'll probably get a lot of value from this video right here. It breaks down the three strategies that our clients use to open accounts remotely every time, including as US citizens. So thanks for watching. Go ahead and click that and I'll see you right over there.